Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.18, an Eagle Dynamics FA-18C Ornit module. Welcome to bonus video number one, the FPAS page, or Flight Performance Advisory System. Let's jump into the cockpit and take a little look at this very useful DDI page. Uh, let's first demonstrate how to bring it up. On the right hand side, if I press menu and menu again, I need to be in the supplemental menu. Uh, we're then looking for FPAS, which is here on the bottom left. If I select that, we then have the FPAS display. Uh, now, this is split top and bottom between current and optimum altitudes. So current, the, the top half is telling us all the figures related to our current altitude. The bottom half is calculating for us what our optimal altitude would be. And then also we have two columns on these uh, two halves of the, the display as well. Left-hand column is range in nautical miles in most cases. Uh, and the right-hand side is all about endurance, which will be in hours and minutes. So let's go through each of the entries in the system here and talk about exactly what they mean. So as I said at the beginning, the top half, the current half, is based on current altitude. If I take a little look at my HUD, we're currently Angels 12. So if we're Angels 12, it's telling me that I can fly 516 nautical miles until we have 2,000 pounds of fuel left. That's what this top line is about. And it tells us that that will take 55 minutes to do so. Uh, now, if I was to reduce my throttle setting, very quickly, you see that all these numbers start to change. Uh, and if I bring the throttle back up again, uh, they change back down again. So yeah, current throttle setting, current altitude, that's my range and that's how long I can fly for. Uh, best Mach number to achieve best range or best endurance is then displayed on the next line, the one labeled best Mach, funnily enough. So if I was to fly at Mach 0.58, I would then actually be able to go a little bit further than I am just now. I could travel a total of 593 nautical miles. If I was more interested in the length of time I could stay airborne, I would want to fly at 0.44 Mach, and this would result in a flight time of 1 hour and 47 minutes. Uh, and of course, as, as I said at the beginning, this is all based on current altitude and current... Um, payload and so on. And if I take a little look down at my fuel gauge, no, sorry, <laughs> I'm thinking of the wrong aircraft. Fuel gauge is over here. So we're currently just over 10,000 pounds of fuel. Uh, so at 10,000 pounds of fuel, uh, if I was to do Mach 0.44, I could fly for an hour and 47 minutes. Now, the last line that we have here in the current page is all to do with current nav target. I don't currently have any nav targets enabled, so let's choose waypoint 2 and enable waypoint navigation. And straight away, we now have some additional information. So nav to waypoint 2. Time is simply how long... Actually, is that the arrival time, in fact? That's when we'll arrive. Mm, no, no, sorry, that is time to, time to get there. So, in 14 minutes and 36 seconds, we would arrive at waypoint 2 if I was actually pointed at it. That's how much fuel we would have remaining, and this is our current uh, rate of burn, uh, pounds of fuel per nautical mile. So that's also quite useful information. Uh, note that this also works with TACAN. So if I quickly go ahead and tune a TACAN, turn it on, select TACAN navigation, we're then going to get information based on that, if I was actually getting a signal from that. It's identified it as Akrotiri, but I'm actually not getting the range. Uh, interesting. Okay, let's choose a different TACAN source then, one that might be a little bit closer. Let's see if Pinar Bashi has one. Oh, actually, we've got a, we've got a TACAN site here. Uh, 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 what's this one programmed to? Okay, this won't go away. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't tell you what it's on there, but if I go into the briefing, I'm pretty sure that it tells us. Uh, Lakatamia 33 X-ray. Let's try that one, see if we're in range for that one. We are. There we go. And as you can see, we now have information based on that. Takan Station 10, time to arrive, fuel remaining when we arrive, and pounds per nautical mile that we'd be burning on the way. So, uh, that's all the uh, functionality of the top half, the current altitude half. 
Then on the bottom half, it does some calculations about the optimum altitude for us. So, uh, if we wanted to achieve the best range, we should be flying at 38,266 feet. If we instead wanted to achieve the best endurance, we'd fly at this altitude, almost 32,000 feet, with these corresponding speeds. So at the higher altitude, we should be at Mach 0.84. At the lower altitude, we should be at Mach 0.68. That would then give us a range of 880 nautical miles until we hit 2,000 pounds. Uh, 2,000 pounds is generally the amount of fuel you should have when you arrive back at the carrier. That's why it uses that. When you're below 2,000 pounds, this will actually say 20 pounds, and it will do a different calculation. And on the right-hand side, if we were to fly at 32,000 feet, 0.68 Mach, we'd be able to fly for an hour and 49 minutes. So that's the optimum um, settings that you've got there. We then have two more functions of the FPAS page. Uh, one of them is it can always calculate for you the optimal cl uh, climb speed. If I box climb, you'll then see that just above our airspeed here, it tells me that uh, my optimum climbing speed in this configuration is 450 knots. So we should climb at that speed in order to uh, have best, uh, you know, best fuel burn, basically. We then also have this setting here called Home. Uh, now, what this does is um, it tracks how long it will... Well, it tracks how much fuel we will have when reaching whatever the selected waypoint is. This should be co-located with your home base. And when it calculates that uh, when you would arrive there, you would only have 2,000 pounds of fuel left, it triggers a master caution and the message Home Fuel is displayed on the left DDI or you know, whichever one is currently displaying your advisories. So uh, in our case, I think I think we want waypoint one. So let's set waypoint one. Uh, and if we were to burn a lot of fuel, and I can simulate that by actually dumping fuel, we will eventually get the home fuel caution. Uh, and I'm going to accelerate time just to make sure that we don't need to wait too long before that happens. Fuel's coming down, just past 8,000 pounds of fuel. Again, you can see all of this information here, the fuel remaining and so on. And our range is ticking down. 6,000 pounds. Five thousand pounds. We've actually lost our TACAN reception there now. Four thousand pounds. Shouldn't be too much longer. There we go. Master caution, home fuel. So uh, if we, it's basically telling us we need to turn back now in order to still have 2,000 pounds of fuel when we arrive at waypoint one. And if I choose waypoint navigation, I've got waypoint one entered, and you can see that in actual fact, uh, oops, I pressed the wrong button. In actual fact, we'd have just over 1,000 pounds of fuel left if we turned back now. Um, so this is a very, very useful thing to... To, to monitor. I would recommend always setting your home waypoint in the FPAS page because it then means you're going to get this very useful master caution. And you'll see that we're now, the, the £2,000 calculations have now reset to £0 and it's now giving us the figures for current and optimum at £0 of fuel remaining. Let's clear that master caution and we'll do a long press to restack those. So that's all the functionality of the FPAS page, the Flight Performance Advisory System. Uh, I hope that you all enjoyed that. Uh, I want to give a, a shout out to DeepHack's ground crew. Uh, you can join the ground crew by clicking the join button below. It's a very small monthly fee and it's a really big help uh, to the channel. Uh, if you can't do that, then please uh, subscribe, like and comment. That's, in, that's uh, completely free and also absolutely fantastic support for me and the channel. Uh, but yes, big shout out to Deepak's Ground Crew, Channel Wright, Frantic Stone, Storm Kimbari, Byron Farrow, Leo Netzel, Harish Rajan, Pink Floyd and Mangash. Thank you very much to all of you for your support. Um, as I said before, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like and comment, fly safe, and I'll see you all next time.